Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes mini review. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at texture pastes. So, I had a request from a patron um, a little ways back, actually, to take a look at texture pastes. And when I uh, thought about it, I knew about Vallejo, and they have some texture pastes. And I thought it'd be nice to do a comparison to um, some other option, just to see whether, you know, what kind of value you're getting. And I took a look, and Liquitex makes their own range of texture pastes for artists. So I thought what I would try to do is get um, the three... Well, actually, Vallejo has a couple more varieties. Um, I believe maybe five? Um, oh, whoops, I'm looking at my notes. Maybe nine. Um, so they have quite a few. But I picked three that I thought I could match reasonably well to some Liquitex options so that we could get a better comparison. Um, Liquitex has uh, seven varieties, uh, so you know, you're going to have to, if you want to deviate from these, you're going to have to do your own uh, looky-loo at them and try to make a judge on what their textures might be like. Um, so what I've done is I've paired these up as best I could based on their descriptions and what I thought their texture might be. And I've made a couple patches, and I realized in the last video I had a little bit, my um, uh, sculpting putty, a little bit of an odd angle on it. Um, so I'm going to do a better angle on these since really we need to see up close what this texture looks like. Uh, so give me a second to change the camera, and we'll take a look. So I thought we might pair them up. Um, so that we could get a little bit of a better look at them as you might envision uh, comparing them. Although we'll find out that there's actually um, a fair bit of difference uh, between some of these names uh, from brand to brand. Um, but this is the Vallejo Black Lava and of course Liquitex is Black Lava. And right away um, you'll notice that the uh, Liquitex, I tried to apply these at relatively the same uh, you know, uh, amount. And um, the Liquitex Black Lava is actually comprised of these little beads which are you know, not quite as dense in terms of how they're scattered throughout the material. Um, so what I tried to do for each of these, to give you a better sense, is um, paint them on and then try to stipple it a little bit so that you could see some of that texture. And then down below what I've done is the exact same thing, but this time I've painted it and I've given it a uh, dry brush highlight. Of course, I probably could have done a brighter color for that because looking through this viewfinder, the viewfinder, um, it doesn't look like it has a very strong contrast. So we'll see. I'm going to try to uh, give you as good a look at that as I can. So I know I said, give me a second to get set up and here I am changing everything again. All right. Hopefully I've got the depth of field enough. I can do a little wonkiness here. So. <laughs> so one of the things that you'll notice um, with the uh, black lava is that it's got a, a pretty aggressive uh, texture to it. And um, I will try to boost this contrast uh, in post-editing if it is hard to see here. Um, and when they are um, painted, let's see if I can, oh my gosh, I was just telling Terrain Direct, I think, don't do this, don't, don't move it around a lot in the frame. And here I am doing it. Sometimes it's unavoidable. Um, in any case, once um, I painted them, what I noticed is that the Liquitex uh, really has a very soft texture to it. Uh, it, uh, you know, almost, I don't know, looks a little like scaly skin or something like that. And um, the black lava has more of a traditional uh, grit to it, uh, but a, a pretty finely graded grit, you know, almost a silty, not quite, but, you know, a very fine grit. Um, and, of course, you can see where it's stippled. It forms um, really aggressive, uh, stiff peaks. Um, you know, it's, it's standing up proud with sharp ridges. And then the Liquitex um, actually has um, a slightly softer edge and even um, is soft enough that it's folded over on its own where the um, Vallejo has really stood proud uh, for the most part. Um, so that was those two. Then... I wanted to take a look at their gray pumice and the resin sand. Now this was the best uh, comparison that I could come up with. And the uh, 
Vallejo's grape hummus is really granular, very granular, almost, uh, you know, you can really see the sand particles in it. And the Liquitex resin actually has a somewhat similar composition um, with actually maybe slightly larger particles. Um, and taking a look at them maybe in profile, we can see that texture in a little bit different light. Um, you know, stippled up, you can see how it's piled and the amount of material that's remaining in between. And of course here you can see it painted. And, um, you know, these peaks are actually for a stronger, uh, coarser material, I should say, it's actually forming a little less peaking than the uh, black lava was, which is kind of interesting. I didn't even notice that until just now. I did try to be as uniform as I could be in terms of application and stippling. Um, so you have to assume there may be a little bit of variation based on, uh, we'll call it user error. Um, but the Liquitex in frame helps especially for a review. Um, the Liquitex, um, you know, is holding its peaks uh, better than the black lava. And um, I think is, is the, you know, these are probably the two most comparable um, uh, out of the options available here. Um, and a uh, little bit more aggressive for the uh, resin sand from uh, Liquitex than the grape pumice. And lastly, we'll take a look at the uh, sandy paste. And the sandy paste, I'll we'll come up here for a real looky-loo. Um, the Vallejo sandy paste has a very even fine grain. Uh, so it's really falling somewhere, um, you know, wait a minute, let me just take a look. Hmm, well, that's kind of interesting. I'm looking at the black lava again, and that's a pretty fine texture. Hmm. And let's go back to the sandy paste. That's interesting. I have a thought. Again, I'm, I, I didn't quite do all of this thinking beforehand. I think the sandy paste has a very similar texture to the black lava, but they've tinted it differently. Mm, don't hold me to that. Um, if maybe it's got slightly finer particle sizes than the black lava, um, but they're somewhat comparable in uh, that regard. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna say there's, I'm gonna say it's finer, uh, but not by a lot really. And then taking a look at the Liquitex natural sand, um, we see that it too has a fairly fine particle size. I'd say even uh, a bit finer than the uh, sandy paste. And uh, take a look at it in profile there. Hopefully we can see some of that. Post editing will be an interesting adventure for this one. Uh, but uh, you know, it's again, I think the liquid texas are a slightly softer medium, meaning that when you're stippling it, you don't get quite the sharpest peaks that you're getting with the Vallejo, um, because here you can see it's, it's folded over uh, just a little bit. And um, in the uh, Vallejo, it really, uh, you know, is holding that peak, those ridge lines, a little bit uh, truer, you know, a little bit more upright. So um, definitely a body difference between the two uh, brands, I should say, overall. Um, but just to do a quick, uh, you know, caveat to that, you know, here in the Liquitex Resin Sand, we actually do have some aggressive peaks and uh, they are uh, holding holding their shape and it's got a really nice rough texture here. Um, so it's going to of course depend on what you're looking for, but uh, you know, this is um, taking that stippling very well. So just to give a little wrap up here, um, Vallejo, like I said, they offer nine varieties. Um, they average about $10 and 50 cents uh, per container. Of course, some of them are um, 850 as I have marked here and they have nine varieties. So the pricing is really between the varieties. For the Liquitex, um, again, seven varieties. One, interestingly enough, has blended fibers in it. Um, so that's gonna give a very different texture uh, and is maybe worth checking out for special kinds of applications. But their uh, tubs are $7.75. So a significant savings over the Vallejo, but that really, I don't think is the real, uh, you know, important consideration because their textures and the medium, uh, the body of the medium that they use is really quite different between the two. Um, I think 
you know, if I were, um, you know, somebody looking for a texture paste and I wasn't super married to any uh, particular texture, I was just looking for something rough and aggressive, the Liquitex Resin Sand makes a good value. Um, but if I wanted something a little more finer grained and something that is going to hold some nice uh, peaks if I'm going to stipple or, or do some other kinds of... Uh, you know, piling texture on it, I might go with the black lava or the sandy paste. Uh, but, you know, the Liquitex black lava really has such a unique beaded texture in the way it lays down on the material. Um, it, it's, I tell you, it almost looks reptilian to me. Um, so, you know, again, your creative eye and the texture that you're looking for is gonna really be uh, the determining factor for which one you wanna select. Um, if you wanted to model normal, ordinary dirt under your miniature and you want to do it quick with a paste, I'm looking at them, I'm making a recommendation, I would recommend for scale, I'd have to say I'd go with the Vallejo Sandy Paste. That would be my first choice. If you want something that looks a little bit more aggressive but isn't wildly out of scale, I would go with the Black Lava. And uh, I would probably only use the gray pumice for some kind of like crazy chaos wastes uh, because I think the particles are just a little bit too large uh, for the scale. And if you have, you know, these nice options, why not pick one that matches a little bit better? So that gives you a look at the comparison between Vallejo and Liquitex modeling pastes. So hopefully that gives you at least some idea of what uh, texture pastes look like and some of the you know varieties that are out there. Uh, this is the first time I've actually looked at more than one. The only one I'd seen previously was the brack, brack, black lava, and I found it fairly interesting. I think it's not a bad option for miniatures, uh, but I think it's limited for terrain. Um, because you really would need to apply a, you know, a fair amount to cover a large area. So these are really designed for small applications based on its cost at least. Although I could see an application for it in terrain for a small special kind of area. Maybe you know, you've got a, a whole you know, uh, board layout and then in the middle there's a campground where it's like all you know, stomp down dirt, you know, and you might use a, a fine texture paste there to get some control over that. And then you could maybe put footsteps or wagon wheel tracks in it. It's not a bad idea, actually. Um, so they present some unique features beyond the typical glue and sand. Uh, and um, that might be something that you're interested in. Certainly, you know, when you do a glue and sand, you know, kind of uh, covering, that's not something you can stipple. Uh, you know, you really need that medium blended into the actual texture to be able to bring it out and to, and to create those peaks. Uh, and, um, you know, I did not play with it, to be honest, um, by trying to push it around into piles and create some other kinds of topography in the surface. Uh, but, um, you know, I think you could probably get some ideas about that just based on taking a look at them the way we just did. So, just remember, there are other varieties out there, um, and that's really going to be, I think, the real, um, you know, choosing focus for you rather than price per se. Because if you are buying these four miniatures, you know, what's the difference between $10 and $7 a tub when you're going to be using it for the rest of your life over your, you know, your army? Uh, because really, those are going to cover a thousand bases. They'll probably dry out, actually, before you end up getting uh, through them all. Um, so wipe your... Wipe the tops of your jars, make sure they're clean. You don't want any residuals on there. Give it a nice turn, make sure all your seams are clean and that will help preserve them longer. And of course you could always add a few drops of water mixed with some medium to keep them hydrated over time. Uh, just a little tip I didn't plan on giving but just struck me there, so. If you have any questions or comments on these products, of course, you know, feel free, leave them down below. Always happy to try to give you a little information if I can. Um, I am in a little flux with managing comments, uh, but uh, 
if there's a question, you know that I'll answer it. So uh, I always encourage you to do so. And if you have some experience with texture pastes, something maybe a different uh, brand that I'm not aware of, or some of the other uh, types of uh, textures that are out there, and you want to leave a comment for everybody else, uh, please feel free to do so. And I always encourage viewers to take a skim through the comments, see if there's something there that I have not discussed, because I find um, a lot of viewers are constantly providing more and more information as time goes on and uh, they are a resource to me and the other viewers should be considered a resource for you as well. So uh, thank you once again for joining me. I always genuinely appreciate it. Welcome to all my new subscribers. I'm flattered uh, and I say that always and I, I do mean it. It's like it's kind of crazy actually to watch like every every week not giant jumps. That's what's fascinating. It's not like boom it goes up like 300. It's just like 20 a day, 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 like that. It's, it's, it's weird. I don't know how that all works, but, uh, but I am grateful that you've joined me on my crazy terrain train, as it were. So uh, keep an eye on the channel. You know I will be back, and I've got a couple other reviews in the pipeline, um, and uh, I don't know exactly when I'll be shooting them, uh, but I expect they'll come out uh, sometime soon after this one. So. Uh, Hopefully you'll stay tuned because you know I will be back soon with another Terranscapes video. Hi, welcome back to a ten <laughs> one. It's hard to there we go. Well, hopefully that's enough. All right and see if there are any alternatives. And of course, um, there is an alternative. Fuck that.